<laughs> Cindy's reminding me. We forgot to mention that Cindy Lawson is playing in Rochester next Sunday. Sunday. At 7 p.m., uh, it's a free and open concert. Uh, we open for Everclear. It's their Rochester Public Music Series, and it's the first one on next Sunday. So, it's a short drive. Come on down. Yeah, I said Rochester's a fun town. Mm -hmm. It's more than just the Mayo Clinic. Yes. <laughs> I've done my time there for that, too, but yes. And now, I want to welcome Maida. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Good. You have been here before, but it's been a few years. Yeah, it is. I, I remember it. But yeah, it's nice to be back. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I was saying, while well, I was bringing you down to the dungeon of the studio, you have been busy playing a lot. Have you had any particularly fun shows or what just spurred the summer of... Yes, I was just in Wisconsin um, in this place called Evansville. I've never been there before. I haven't even heard of it, but it's just uh, south of Madison. And it's an awesome small community there. And um, it was like an outdoor, one of those porch things. But mm -hmm. oh. they, yeah, they it's, um, I can't remember if it's like a weekly thing, but it's definitely during the summer. And... It's so cool. Like people bring their, you know, their chairs and um, beverages and stuff. And there's kids and families and just cool people there, who just want to sit and see a good show. Well, that and folks, folks who aren't in studio didn't hear, but but both Maida and Cindy, you're both talking about how there are a lot of places outside of the Twin Cities. Yes. That are and it must be just an, a totally different experience, but I. I kind of want to sell it to those of us who live in the Twin Cities that maybe it's worth the drive to go to different places. Or, if you're in Black Duck, maybe start something on your porch. Yes, please. <laughs> it's, it is really a nice, refreshing thing to do, um, especially if you're used to bigger crowds or, you know, you're kind of jaded from the dive bar scene here. <laughs> um, those are great, too, but, yeah. you know... <laughs> Finding new faces and people who are really interested in maybe what you're saying and what you're all about, and um, it's it's really nice. And then also, they're more affordable um, concerts and free, like Cindy's yeah. show, where you get to see like Everclear, like what? Um, <laughs> and Cindy, hello. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I mean it's a win all the way around. Well, and I think those that's an opportunity to get a, a much younger crowd in. Mm -hmm. By, you know, I, I sort of mean three-year-olds, and I sort of mean 13-year-olds. Yes. <laughs> but how are, you know, how are kids going to love music later if they don't hear it now? Exactly. They'll probably remember it better and more and be more attached to it if the earlier they get it. I, that's mm -hmm. what I think. Well, and the idea that you can see music live. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a whole new thing, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it's not, you know, hundreds of dollars for a ticket for a concert. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, because there's so many people who go see a couple shows a year, but those, you know, it's Taylor Swift, and, mm -hmm. it, you know, God love you if you're going to Taylor yeah. Swift, but, that yeah, you are you are only going to go see one a year. Right, if that's... And and if that's the case, then all the more reason to come for the cheaper one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> where you get like a whole bill that's cool. Yeah. Well, and I, the other nice thing is that when it's free, you you can be more adventurous in what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you'll be able to have a closer connection, like maybe come up and talk to the artist, you know, buy some merch. Yeah, you know. exactly, exactly, and like face to face, you know, versus you know, phone to phone or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right, the one to many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, phone to all. Phone to all. Mm. <laughs> what else have you been working on? Um, I have been playing more solo shows, and I've been trying to, uh, you know branch out with that and see what I can do and experiment a little bit and uh, I'm actually going to be playing at the Aster July 19th with this 
really great artist vocalist Cassandra Cole and uh, the tickets are available on the Astor Cafe site I believe and yep yep July 19th it should be a really fun pleasant evening on at the St. Anthony Main. Great. Should we play some music? Do you want us to play some of the new music? Please do. Okay Please what would you do. like? Let's start off with Infected, I guess, the title track. You know what I'm going to look to see, one? and you will know, mm -hmm. is that is that is there a radio-friendly version on... Oh, oh. Uh, I, I Sorry. Maybe? Sorry. I, I, I Do you have so. a second choice? Sorry. Sorry. I don't have a radio-friendly version of it. That's okay. Sorry. Um, no, 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 no. Don't apologize. Um, I'm, I'm like the bad waitress. Is that what, nope. Is that what that E means? That's what that E Explicit. means. Explicit. Explicit, yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, let's, let's go with gold. Stream will obviously catch what we're saying, but on the radio, people can hear. Okay. I was driving with my friend Monica yesterday, and we don't always have similar music tastes, but I said, I think I have something we're both gonna like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was like, Yep. Wow, really? You know, I can lean very punk or country, and I love your music. She's very R and R, R B, and oh, yeah, yeah, she's really. But we're listening to it all. Is all the way to the, the bison friend? farm we went to. Is this the friend who lost a pound a week or something? Yeah. And and she did that just by. Um, yeah, we all, we've always walked. We walk every day together, or most days together. But she yeah. just I, she started eating better. But yeah. So. Oh, it wasn't like an experiment. It was a goal okay. for a year. But so that she's but she keep she's still doing it. So yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Aww. I thought you were gonna say something like she lost a pound of only. Yeah. You know, or something <laughs> like. Bananas only. No, <laughs> no, no, just healthy. Just, you know. Nice. Yeah. Pistachios inside the chips. And just... So, do you do you count how many steps you walk a day? Do you have a I do on my phone, yeah. I yeah. do that too. Yeah. So, what's your, what's your average? Seven, eight miles a day. Whoa, okay. that's a lot. I know, but it's my so misspent in middle that's age. That's great. <laughs> Is that like twenty thousand? Um, yeah, twenty is probably eight or nine. Okay. And I, my hope is to get to ten, but I've, I, I used to be very crazy about that, but now I'm like, you know, it turns out you have to work sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's crazy because I try to do twelve thousand steps a day. I don't know why that. I feel like I heard that somewhere, and I was like, I think that's like the goal that every American has. It really. <laughs> It is. It is. I'm a, a, an outlier for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, just nice. you want to step it up. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be this competitive thing, and I had one of those Fitbits, and everyone's right. like, no more. Yeah. Because then I'd go on vacation, and I would get like 15 miles. I have to tell you, so, you know, <laughs> David Sedaris. Oh, yes. Are you, I, are you going to talk after this is done? Yes, because otherwise it'll go right to infected. Oh, okay. But I, I will tell you the David Severus story when this is done. Great song. That is Gold by Maida, who we have in studio. Tell us about Gold. Tell us about some of the new music that you're, that you're playing, that you're working with. Um, a lot of these songs were sort of in the midst of COVID and afterwards, right afterwards, and just trying to find a connection with other voices and people and that sort of brokenness and the broken feeling that, um, and then also like the kind of inner breakdown that 
people had, you know? And I think right now I'm just like, oh, ready to just play out, you know? Oh, good. This, I could... <laughs> you know, I've done enough, like, inner inner thinking and inner arguing and debating and discussion that I just need to be out with people now. That's good. And sharing that and that, you know, really helps, I think, um, connect with others and then maybe, hopefully, helps others connect with something else. Well, and I think your music always has been a, about that community. And I'm thinking, and I just, the, I can't remember the name of the song, but the Me Too Minneapolis song that you did. Because mm-hmm. that was very much about connection, but lifting each other up and having grace and for ourselves as well as, yes. you know, and I think that you do such a good job with your music in terms of that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really try to... A lot of my music comes from a dark place, and usually I'm there for too long, and then the music is like, all right. <laughs> and then I, as I'm writing, I'm like, this is really sad. Like, wow. <laughs> Like, I'm not there really anymore, but how can I still connect with that and then communicate that with other people without losing it, you know? There always seems to be a glimmer of light or there's a way out or there's there's a silver lining that you have in the music as well that's, mm-hmm. that feel Like, there is... I don't know if the arm is reaching out or reaching down. You know, I don't, and that's kind of what's interesting about it too. Are you lifting people up? Are you being lifted up? That's awesome that you even say that because I think that no matter where you are, you'll be able to relate, hopefully. Like, maybe you're down there and you're looking for a way up, or maybe you're down there and you're just looking for somebody, you know, you're looking for some grace, you're looking for someone who's been there or who can be with you or... You know, someone who has been there and can look like can show you some compassion. So, I guess that I'm. That's my hope is that what you know, wherever you are, you can find something there to connect with. Because we've all been there. You know, yeah. not just with COVID, with any issue, with any you know problem, big or small, outer inner. Well, in a funny way all of us experience COVID at the same time worldwide Mm -hmm. and then nationally but even more locally to experience the summer of 2020 I think we have such shared experiences now that it's easier to see ourselves and others and others in ourselves totally yeah Mm -hmm. I think that is also very translatable to other life situations other events you know now that COVID kind of just like put us all in the same place for a second you know can um help use those lessons and those experiences for other things you know that's that's the hope yeah yeah I mean it's funny because I think about You know, you have shared experiences with the people you grew up with. You have shared experiences of, you know, if you've if you've been a parent or if you've been in the army or if you you know different all different things. But this Mm -hmm. was the one where it was very, um, it it was thrust upon us. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was was, nobody chose this, but it was. But just years later, and what is. How is it to play this music out now, to play very internal music out? Yeah, it's it's nice. It's finally, it's finally here. Like, I finally get to do it now mm-hmm. in, in, in person. So that means a lot. And it also then gives other meaning to me now, now that I get to, you know, perform it out to people and see how people react. Um, then I, now I get like, other opinions on my opinions and <laughs> so yeah it helps me to so kind of the start of a conversation mm-hmm yeah continues it well and that when you can have art music anything that starts a conversation I think that that's powerful yeah really is should we play another song we should do you want another one off the new yeah Let's do um, Freak. Oh, good. We... 
We have played this recently on a different show. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I'm happy to do it. That's. <gasps> now I've screwed myself up. It's just going to take a second. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, who did your your album design and everything it's just incredible oh thanks uh i i guess i styled it uh -huh. i did all my everything visual but then the um the photographer was a saint paul guy he went to central high school um he's a great he's done a lot of like black artists and uh -huh. black photo shoots and um yeah we We've gotten connected to music, so he asked me to do it. Yeah, we, I don't know. We've been many, meaning to do something. And I was like, this is perfect. And then um, Carly, my friend Carly, who did like the videos and she helped out with the, um, the graphic for the CD. At album. So, do you know who Betty Davis is? Mm -hmm. I, I just get that whole just kind of wild just emotional free you know just I mean especially with this song you know and and the kind of music she did that that just was um, you know it's like no one else could could do what she did you know that's like wow i've never gotten that <laughs> really yeah never this song it's like totally reminds me you know because she talk about being eons ahead of her time you know and and all the things that kept <laughs> women back and down. I'm going to have to Sydney. ask you to talk about this again once oh, we're on air, air, yeah, but I'm glad they're going to hear about it. Um, so people will hear the... That's, okay, I'll just stop right now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I mean, people will want to hear, I think this, I mean, we are got it here, but... Yeah. yeah. It's wow. It's true. It's true. Wow. <laughs> I know, sorry, I hate it, but... <laughs> I've got a lot of connection to that era. Or that like aesthetic and then mm -hmm. I mean I wasn't there but you know I was, yeah a lot of my music really know like especially MGM cartoons and that kind of era and the, like I used so much of that because it was in cartoons when I was growing up and then now it's just like It is Freak by Maida, who we have in studio. And folks who aren't in the studio don't know, sometimes the best conversations start when when we're, when you all are listening to the music. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna look at you, Cindy, and say, will you make the connection again that you just made? Because it's so amazing. So, <clears throat> especially with Maida's uh, last song, Freak, um, it, it just drew me back. Um, Betty Davis was a singer, songwriter, performer in the 70s. She's better known for being married to Miles Davis. And she ended up um, kind of pulling herself back and, and going into isolation. And I think she recently passed away. Um, there's a wonderful documentary about her, but unfortunately, it only has, um, I think they interviewed her over the phone oh. or something. Um, they weren't able to, I mean, they had some concert footage. Um, but just this kind of uh, defiance and... and um, confidence and it, it 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 just that's what that song reminded me of um just the the 
percussive funkiness and everything. It just, um, and the thing is, is that, um, you know, a, a black female performer, you know, the, at that time, you know, it, it, there just were so many um, roadblocks and, and, and everything. And someone who's a creative artist kind of gets swept if, if they are unable yeah. to kind of function in this business right now, you know. Yeah. But it's like, it's like you're picking up the gauntlet and, and, and running with it. And it, it's just beautiful. I, I, yeah, I just think you're amazing. Thank you. That's, <laughs> I have never gotten that name in, <laughs> even in the same sentence or conversation. Um, so thank you. That's amazing. I, uh, I have a lot of, a lot of influence from, you know, eras from the 20s, from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, uh, obviously the 60s and whatever and now, but um, I real a lot of my music has a lot of samples from really old records and it has a lot of, um, a lot of, samples from like cartoons and um, just, you know, weird, weird TV shows from <laughs> them. And I, re I remember going to uh, like old throwback diners and stuff and seeing pictures of like Betty Davis and seeing pictures of all these people. And that just is just an immediate connection now that mm -hmm. I am so glad that yeah. you know someone can see and yeah. um and then yeah i i well, feel and, like but. and james brown and and you know all all that all that intense funk stuff you know that you're just you're just putting meta in there and just making a a, a wonderful uh new thing out of it Thank you. I it's hard because I feel like sometimes maybe I'm not connecting with people anymore as times go by, and maybe I mean it's not going to stop me, but I just you know that's a a common thought in my head, which just drives me even more. But it's also hard to um, come across and try to deal with. Uh, so it's nice to know that that can resonate with people like some of the influences and some of the voices that I've that have helped me have really you know still connected with people today I could do that I guess I'm happy to do that <laughs> <laughs> but I think you do connect with people mm -hmm. I mean I know you connect with me watching you on stage and watching people connect with you is is powerful you know I, I think that and you you have such a presence and such a performance too. I mean, it's just it, it, it's it's as fun to watch as it is to, and it's it's very empowering. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I'm an acquired taste. I'll, <laughs> I'll admit that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, I think that's part of the reason why I've been chosen to do music is because I'm not normal and I'm not um, easily digestible. <laughs> um, but that's a that's a good thing, you know. Yeah, and oh, I, I can't, absolutely. You know, that's just the way I am, and on stage, that's who I am. That's a part of me. I can't fake it. Like, I, if I could fake it, I'd probably not be doing it anymore because mm -hmm. I'm a bad faker. Well, that's and I think and you know I think you both know Lang and the girl at the rock shows, and she and I see a lot of, a lot mm -hmm. of music together, you know, separately and together. And there are bands you see and you go, yeah, yeah, it's good. And the, it's the band that takes you a hot minute to go, all right, I got to hear that again. That That's going to always be your favorite. That's going to be the one you remember. That's going to, that brings something new. That's mm -hmm. got something that, that strikes you in a different right. way, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, who? Exactly. Potato chips are really good, but at a certain point, you, you, you're done. Yeah. Even I, at a certain point, am done with potato chips. <laughs> I mean, you're going to you know, need 
Fuck me though. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly it. Or, or a fruit or a vegetable or meat. I mean, that's the, you know, sometimes, so some of the people that, I think if you feel like you're not disconnecting, it's because people are looking for potato chips and there's nothing wrong with potato chips every now and then. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. sometimes it's fun to just go see a band and just enjoy it and, mm-hmm. you know, but when you're looking for something that's a little deeper, that builds that sense of community and that starts a conversation and draws back to the history of things, mm-hmm. that's... You know that's a lesson too. You just bring in so much more, and you have a you have a background of teaching and working with. Did you work in the schools a little? Yeah, yeah. I've I've worked a lot in schools and a lot with kids. Um, teaching. Not well, but so if you're working much, with school, but, but in a different, in a maybe a non formal setting. But I've worked yeah. in a lot of schools to know. Yeah, if you're working with kids, you're doing teaching. Yeah, I mean, I I I am not a comfortable traditional teacher where I'll go up there with like my PowerPoint and mm-hmm. teach a lesson but I'm more like okay let's do something together and I'll show I can you know give you options you can decide or I'll show you through my music yeah you know but but that's a lesson they're going to remember more I think so, and I and I have taught. I have taught from preschool to graduate school. I have done every range of teaching, and you try to in, in, inflect some of that into all of your classes. But when you know, when you're teaching kids spelling, or there's just some things, and you're so thankful for the for the folks who come in and do a project, come in for a week or a month or every day for, because you're like, yeah, that's what they're going to remember. I mean, mm-hmm. that that's in when you can that helps open their minds. Yes. Then to pay attention to. I never taught algebra. I never taught math. They, nobody wants me to teach math. But, you know, that that, yeah, that, that, yeah. that brings in. But I, I've taught English as a second language for a long time. And nouns are nouns. You just got to go through them. I mean, there's just some parts of it. But to be able to bring, to spark that deeper thinking. Mm-hmm. Some of it is learning and some of it is thinking, you know. So yeah. that's, but getting people to think is teaching too, I think. Yeah, and I think that, you know, as many senses as you can connect with at once, then it's more it's more likely that that person is going to remember and then take something away from it mm-hmm. because it's not somebody just you know talking at you or singing mm-hmm. at you it's not just singing it's listening and it's feeling if, if someone can feel it they're more likely to remember it so mm-hmm. i mean and that's music already that's like Eating, you like you're gonna remember how that tastes, you yeah. know, or like going somewhere versus being at home and just you know experiencing it, yeah, it, you know. But I like that. if you feel it, you're more likely to remember it. Yes, and that's mm-hmm. bringing that to bringing that to line in next week because that is kind of whereas like there's got to be something, and I'm I'm gesturing with my hands, you know. There's got to be a spark. There's got to be something that that captures our attention. That, but when a band does, you're like. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes. That's that's what you want to... So you bring that absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah. Should we play another song? What? What would you... How many are we playing? Um, I'm looking at the time. I think we could probably do two more. Two more? Okay. I was just laughing because I... Like, yours are three minutes. Two more? Yeah. You know, if you were low, I'd say one. <laughs> um, let's do... Staccato by me. Is that on there? It is. I should let you do that. You can see what I'm doing. Nice. So, are you from Minnesota, Minneapolis? Mm -hmm. Yep. I grew up here. I'm the same. Or I grew up the center. Earth. I grew up in St. Paul. I was going to say, I thought you were St. Paul. Come on yeah, now. Yeah. Come on now. I was going to say Central, and I was like, no, that's where I went to high school. Oh, but that's... I did go to Central. Um, yeah. Are you? Yeah, well, I grew up in the Stillwater area, 
grew up in Bayport, um, and then came to Minneapolis. And then I lived for a little while out in New York, and I came back. But, um, yeah. And then have you been in St. Paul or Minneapolis? We live in Minneapolis. I've never lived in the city of St. Paul. That's all right. I, I like it anyways. So yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And how often do you play? You've been playing a lot since lately too. It seems like during the summer it goes way up because there's just like outdoor shows and all this stuff. So we play a lot and then when you get down to the winter months, it's only maybe like once or twice because you're not really going out of town because the driving is not so good. And um, you just, there's something happening every single night yeah. in the Twin Cities. Yeah. So you can't, you almost can't play more than once, you know, or twice a month because, you know, there's, you know, you, you want to expand your audience and everything, but usually, you know, you've got the same people coming to each show, and, yeah. So, I mean, and like we were just talking about, I love going out of town, you know. Definitely. Have you, like, toured, gone on long tours? Yeah, well, not really long tours that with this band, um, we did do a week with the Von Tramps. We went out the Midwest, which was just a blast, and it was so wonderful. Like, just like basically following them around because they're just brilliant and they've got it all under control. Mm -hmm. Oh, with Maida, who we have in studio. Yes. Hi. <laughs> I can't stand still for that song. Good. That's a good dancing song. Good. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's about uh, just being stuck in the web of dates and times and minutes and seconds. <laughs> now, my funny question, is that a, a, a during or post-COVID thought on time? I think it was an evolving, because uh, it's always been, I remember um, beginning that song and just being, just feeling so stressed out and pressed to do all these things uh, and be this person and all be all these things and get all these things done and it was like daunting, you know, like yeah. you can really lose sleep because of that. And you have just a lot of pressure, at, you know, whether it be homework or school or job or bills or kids or parents or whatever, health. Um, yeah. So, you know, holidays, ah, mm -hmm. those I'm are always right, coming. Right, <laughs> yeah. So where did you, where did you record all this music? Um, I recorded it at home studios at friend studios mm -hmm. um a place i think i was at my friend kyle's um studio in his home built studio uh he's also the trumpet player for the nerdy and oh, the wow. other bands yeah he's a great guy and then also with zach pearl at pearl studios before it burned down oh yeah so did you did you go in at the beginning with the 11 songs and then record them all or was this over time was this okay i got a couple songs i'm going to go in and i'm going to do these now and then in a couple weeks i'll come back with some other things um i think well i think i usually have an idea and a structure and all the vocals, like the main vocals, figured out um, before I go into the studio and record. You guys owe me money. Yeah. And, um, no kidding. 
But I'm also that kind of person that needs to have, like, before I present it to anybody, it needs to be at least in a presentable enough mode that I'm happy with, Mm -hmm. which means a complete thought, which means, like, a vision for the song and a message for the song and how some, you know, at least the feeling that I want to present it with. Um, And then once I get into the studio, then I can really sort of be creative and... um, create dynamics and uh, play with the instrumentation so that usually takes for each song maybe it can take from any time one session to like a week or two weeks Mm -hmm. and then I can tweak it as much as I want to but it's fairly like fast I I would I think compared I don't I, I guess I don't know everybody's right but I'm I'm a very like okay I need to be d- okay with it for myself before I just mm-hmm. I can't just throw out ideas you know mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. I'm gonna because I never have a comparison in the studio oh how is it for you Cindy um, I want to be yeah. clear what I'm talking yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well so I usually have the songs pretty much laid out um and I've been working with Steve Price, um, so he's been helping to produce. So while the guys and I will put together the song um, and figure out parts and stuff, when we go into the studio, you know, we'll kind of present that and Steve will give his input on, well, maybe the chorus should go here or there should be a break Hmm. here or or when the song is done he'll like sweeten it with some percussion or he'll do different things to it um I think it's like you you just can't believe when a song comes to you it's like to me it really (laughs) comes through you yeah where it's like, oh my God, where did this come from? You know, and it's it's a very exciting birth, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it. Um, as she said, you know, time is money. Yeah. And um, not having the the luxury of being able to just have my own studio where I can go right. in and put everything together. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a matter of figuring out the budget and, and figuring out, um, how can we, you know, make this the best song that really represents what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think even though money and time and all that stuff, um, get in the way and can hinder a little bit, I think Mm -hmm. for me... I need to be, I need some, like, guidelines, some deadlines, some structure, mm-hmm. some rules, some, you know, um, so I can break them, but also, <laughs> um, because I, if you put me in a yard, I need, like, and I'm free, I would probably need, like, a gate <laughs> offense. Yeah. You know, because I'm just going to be like, I don't know, let's do everything. Yeah. Yeah. I used to teach creative writing and it was funny because you'd have a lot of freestyle poetry and oh yeah and people that that assignment was going to be handed in late every time mm-hmm. yeah. you get into we, I want you to write a haiku a sustina uh you know and all of a sudden when when that structure was put on it right it it opened doors mm-hmm. yeah and I think sometimes that it does when you can work within a framework um I know it really helps for me what also really helps is is objective voices saying you know with with the idea of making something better how can Mm -hmm. we make this better how can we how can you really get that across and um you know I mean granted there are people like Prince and you know who who was able to go into the studio do everything themselves and then release it without mm-hmm. someone going hey 
why didn't you do you know mm -hmm. and it's like that's fine that's not me right I I like the editors you know I like I like the feedback I like the I like getting pushed yeah you know I agree I I do think though that Prince had you know he he asked for feedback and I know that people helped him and he would ask for help too like so I think as long as everyone want our finishers and want to get it finished yeah <laughs> then that's like the main thing and also people if they're honest and you know not and and not and easy and and you know willing to collaborate and listen um you know feelings can get hurt and whatnot but mm -hmm. you know i if you don't like something i need to know because then i can be better then right. i can go from there and if I don't like your opinion then I don't like it mm -hmm. but if I do you know I will sit there and think like okay is this somebody else used it that way not me okay how well uh, is it that way <laughs> you know so I don't know I it, it those kinds of things help a lot yeah plus it makes you defend it's like no I really think it should be this way because A, B, and C. Yeah. And then you really believe in it. You yeah. You know, it's like defending a thesis or something. Yeah, it's like you a know. reminder, like, this is why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> well, yeah. Change it or own it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Speaking of finishers, I'm looking at the clock in the wall. <laughs> we should play one more song, but before we do, remind folks about... Your upcoming shows? Yes. So, that, you know. In July, I uh, the big one is July 19th with Cassandra Cole at the Astor Cafe. Uh, I believe music is 9 to 11, something like that. 8 to 11? I don't know. But we're just sharing the, the, sharing the night, and she is really awesome yeah. at performing, singing. She's great to look at. <laughs> yeah, know. she's got it all. You know, it hits all the sense. Sorry, Cassandra. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Please come. Astor Cafe, July 19th. And you can follow my socials at Maida Mess, uh, M A Y D A M E S S, on Instagram. And then Maida, M A Y D A, uh, on Facebook. I have like three stupid You do. Profiles. You are funny because, yeah, you have quite a few. Yeah, they're dumb. But I will. Ah, I will. They're fun. I will respond. Um, nice. And so don't be a stranger. And um, X or Twitter, I don't even know what it is anymore, but it's at Meta. Perfect. Um, yeah, so please come. Ask your cafe. All right. Let's mm -hmm. play Snack Pack. Okay. Ooh. Well, that's the first one. All right. I am just... I'm just nailing it here with the technology today. Mm -hmm. Snack back by Mita. So, um, anyway, so yeah, touring, uh, the Von Tramps are fantastic. And yeah. then on our own, we've done, like,